Hello, I'm MC Toon. Today I'm mirroring another video by my friend Roundthinker. He's in Israel and is proposing an experiment that he's going to be doing. I'm going to do it too, and maybe you want to as well. He's going to measure the length of the shadow of uh, cast by the sun using a stick on the solstice and the equinox, and then on the solstice again. And then that will help us to try, uh, pinpoint the location of the sun to see if it's if the earth is flat or round. All that you need to do if you want to participate is a stick and a tape measure and an accurate timekeeping device like your phone. Um, what you do is you go to some place that you want to film. You find out when your local solar noon is and you measure the stick. You measure the shadow. And you do it right at noon. And uh, you might want to videotape to get some landmark in the background so people know where you're at. Uh, you can get the time to do this off of timeanddate.com. I'll put the link in the description, but I'm sure you can find it. And it knows exactly what time it, it will be local solar, no solar noon in your town. So here it is. Take it away, Round Thinker. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. This video is an intro to the experiment I plan to launch on December 22nd. And if everything goes well, then the measurements we receive will determine unequivocally whether the world is a sphere and the sun is far away, or it's flat with a local sun. You've all heard of the Eratosthenes experiment, which calculated with shadow length measurement the circumference of the Earth. Now, some of the proponents of the flat Earth theory claim that the same results can also be obtained for a flat plane, and as a proof, bring the following chart. This chart illustrates the thing that flat earthers can still hang on about as proof to a flat world, or at least not a thing that's a proof to a spherical one. We, of course, know that the angles do not work out that way because geometry of a plane and geometry of 3D bodies are not the same. This is what winter in the northern hemisphere looks like. The Earth has a 23.5 degrees tilt which causes us to see the sun above the Tropic of Capricorn, resulting in short days, long nights, and in northern enough places the sun doesn't shine at all. As the annual orbit advances, the Earth aligns so that the tilt is perpendicular to the sun, which causes us to experience days equal in length between daytime and nighttime, and to see the sun above the equator. Three months later, at the middle of summer, the Earth is exactly opposite what it was in the winter, the sun is being observed over the Tropic of Cancer, the days are long and the nights are short. On a flat world, they believe it looks like this. The sun literally makes circles that expands from the Tropic of Cancer through the equator to the Tropic of Capricorn between summer and winter, and then retracts again between winter and summer. This is a side section of what we would see if the world is flat. From left to right you see the location of the experiment, the positions of the sun in the skies on the summer solstice, the equinox, and the winter solstice. Respectively, these are the shadow length and the cause for the changing shadow length on a flat Earth. On a ball, on the other hand, this is what happens. The Earth itself is the one that changes its angle, and accordingly the black pole changes its angle to the Sun. Therefore, the reason for the change in shadow is this. Each season, the entire Earth is at a different angle in relation to the Sun. So. A brief mathematical explanation of what we would measure exactly and what we expect. My location is latitude 31.35 north, which puts me 6,099 kilometers from the Tropic of Capricorn in the first phase of the experiment, which is the winter solstice. Link to the map that shows the distance is in the description. According to the heliocentric model, the angle to be obtained is 54.85 degrees. Assuming this is really what we get, the result is still inconclusive and to, to the same extent, small local sun at 4,294 km altitude will give the same result. Three months from today, in the second stage of the experiment, the spring equinox, 
we will see whether a local sound at the same altitude will give the same expected angle or not. And that's for today friends. At the solar noon of the winter solstice, Sunday, December 22nd at exactly 11.37 am, everything will be ready for the measurement. I'll bring it all up here a few hours later. Feel free to share this video with whoever you want and you're all welcome to mirror it on your videos and channels. I was, as always, Roundthinker and see you in the next video.